Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti, and uh, we're just going to go forth in the word of life today. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to be talking about a very important subject, as everything in the Bible is important, right? Well, you know, one of the things that hit me this morning, and uh, there are times that I say, God, what is it that you want me to speak? Actually, almost every day. I, very rarely do I just have things plan out, but um, I want to thank God for the over 30 years that I just stood studying the Word of God so that I can have, uh, I guess, a file cabinet full of the Word. You know what? When you have a file cabinet, when your file cabinet is filled with the Word, then God can easily pull out anything He wants. Well, this morning I said, God, what is it that you want me to speak about? And this topic came into my mind. Um, but what happened, and I'm going to put this up now because the, the title is, I am the light of the world. And um, I put 3076 there for a reason. I'm going to explain that in a little bit. But one of the things that happened, which was very interesting, I was looking in Genesis, just looking at Genesis chapter 30, verse 2, which we're going to put up. And um, I had no idea what was going to happen. And I did not have this verse of scripture as you know, the topic of the day. I would just happen to look at it. It was interesting. I was looking at the Hebrew words and, you know, looking at the letters and memorizing the words. And I was like, wow, this is very interesting. Speak about it one day. Well, um, but, you know, John 8, verse 12 came to mind. and, um, And it says this. It says, you know, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus is speaking to the leaders and he's speaking to people there. And uh, something happened in my, something happened in my studies this morning that that blew me away. I I did not have Genesis, the story that I'm going to be sharing with you in mind. But then I was intrigued because I looked at the Hebrew for this light of the world, for, for John chapter you know, 8, verse 12, because it's also in Hebrew. I looked at the Hebrew letters, and I realized that when they were calculated, it came out to 3076. And I was like, okay, what, what does that mean, right? I'm talking to Rafina, too. I said, what does that mean? I mean, what is 3076? You know? And so, but see, I've learned something. That when you study the Word of God, everything has significance. There is nothing that you study. If it, listen, if it was not important, then why even look at it? And some people say, well, you know, you, the Word of God is simple. If it's so simple, how come we're still studying it? Well, I want to let you know that God is fascinated with numbers because the whole creation is built on numbers. Yeah, it is. Well, check this out. So I, I looked at the Hebrew on I am the light of the world, you know, the whole verse of scripture, John 8, 12. And it came out to 3076. Well, I'm going to tell you what blew my mind. When I looked up, I said, I want to see every verse of scripture that deals with 3076. This one came up that I was looking at, just happened to be looking at this morning. We're, we're going to read. And I said, no, it can't, it can't be. It cannot be. What is the issue here? Whenever you see a number that is the same in Scripture, and other Scriptures have the same number, there is significance there. So this is what I want you to see. Again, John says, I am the light of the world. This is what he said. And the one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, we're going to go to Genesis because it, it came together, and I said, well, let me see. Let me see the truth in this. So we, I went to Genesis, and I'm going to start in verse 1, but verse 2 is the key. And it says here, when Rachel saw that she could not bear children to Jacob, Rachel envied her sister and said, and she said to Jacob, give me children. If not, I will die. Look at verse 2 now. This is the key. And Jacob became angry with Rachel, and he said, Am I in the place of God 
who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? That's a question mark. Let's go down. Then she said, here is my servant girl, Bela. Go into her that she may bear children as my ser- segregate. Then I will even have children by her. Verse 4. Then she gave him Bela, her female servant, as a wife. And Jacob went into her, and Bela conceived and gave birth to a son for Jacob. I mean, you figure she, it would say she gave birth to a son for Rachel. Mm-mm, something happens here. Watch this now. Verse uh, 6. Then Rachel said, God has judged me <laughs> and has also heard my voice, and he has given me a son. Therefore, she called his name Dan, which means God is my judge. Finally, verse 7. And Bilal, Rachel's servant, conceived again and bore a second son to Jacob. Verse 8. And Rachel said, I have struggled a mighty struggle with my sister and have prevailed. And she called his name Neptali, which means he struggles or wrestling. Now, I want you to see something. I want you to see something before we move on. These seven verses of scriptures are important, but verse two is what comes in line with Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me, anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let's look at verse two now again. Let's look at verse two again. And it says, and Jacob became angry with Rachel, and he said, am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? There are four matriarchs, that that means women who are patriots in a sense, that are mentioned in the Bible in Genesis, and we see them as Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, and they all have their problems, and I promise you I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a study on that, it's beautiful. Their perfections as well as their imperfections and how God worked in them, but we're at the last one, Rachel. We're not gonna, gonna get all into her and what she was about, but what happens with her has a lot to do with what I'm talking about in John chapter eight, verse 12. She blames her husband for not having children. And I want you to understand something. As we look at the next slide in John chapter 1, verse 9, it says this. This was the true light which gives light to everyone entering the world. He was in the world. The world came to be through him, yet the world did not know him. Okay. What we see here, of course, is another translation says that he lights every human being coming into the world. Her blaming Jacob for not having children and him getting angry with her about not being able to open her womb. He says, am I God? Do I have the power to open your womb? No, he did not have the power to light the seed that will come out of him. Think about this now. It is just a seed. Men carry the seed. But watch this. When it enters into the womb, if God does not give light to that seed, it is not going to become a human. It is just a seed. The whole concept of life in the seed is God striking the seed with the power of his light. Sometimes say, God, how come there's nothing happening in my, how come every time I plant a seed here, nothing grows? 
Well, are you walking in the light? And we're going to see what walking in the light is. Now, I want you to see the next verse of scripture. Remember, we just saw that he is the true light that gives light to everyone entering into the world. That means that every person that goes into the womb and it, be, you know, it has life, it becomes a fetus, it becomes a baby. It comes out of the womb. He says, from the very time that you came out of your father, I hit you with light. Wow. Wow. There are three words that you have to understand in Jewish culture. They take it very seriously. And that is energy, life, and light. Now, I want you to see, let's go back and let's see now John chapter 8, verse 12. Remember, that I put through 3076 in the first slide, and I said I will explain it to you. Well, and, and I did in a way. Okay, John 8 verse 12, let's read it again. Then Jesus spoke to them and saying, I am the light of the world. That means that the world was conceived, was brought forth by him. He is the light that brought all things into existence. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Notice that the word darkness here also represents ignorance. It represents death. It represents no life. And I want you to know that when that verse of scripture in Hebrew is calculated, it comes out to 3076, 3076. Well, when we go to the next verse, in Genesis chapter 2, and Jacob became angry with Rachel, and he said, I am, am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the, the fruit of your womb? This comes out exactly to 3,076. And because of this, we can see the similarities that Rachel was looking to Jacob as God. And let me tell you, Jacob... Um, Rachel has some serious issues. This is the woman that when they left their father's house, remember her sister Leah and her, there was always a fight going on. Always a fight going on. That's why she says, I have, I have prevailed over my sister. We're going to see at the end, did she really prevail by having children with her maidservant, her surrogate mother? Did she really prevail or was there still animosity inside of her working? And Jacob becomes angry with her. He said, are, are, you, are you looking at me as God? I don't have the power to light a seed. I don't have power to put energy in the seed. You, you better walk in the light. If you really want this, you better find God. And Rachel, let me tell you, she was a liar. She lied. I said, she, th th listen, there's perfection and there's imperfection in all of us. So the part of Rachel that really brings to light what's going on is that when they left Laban's house, her father, Laban came looking for Jacob because his gods, were di his gods disappeared. <laughs> he was an idol worshiper. And so what Rachel did, she put the gods in a chest and she sat on the chest and when he came looking in her tent for her gods, she said, I I'm sorry, I cannot get up because I have my period. And so you don't touch that. <laughs> but what's interesting is this, because he didn't look in there, you know, that's it. Now watch this. She's sitting on gods and she says she has a ministration. A ministration, I'm sorry to say, is, is, is when you have that, you have to live outside the tent. Because it is what it is. And so she lied about having gods and she was sitting on top of them. Her relationship with God was not as strong as it should be. And that's why she blamed her husband for not giving her fruit. Now, what does it mean to walk in the light? Well, let's look at it. What it means to walk in the light is the three words that I mentioned, which is very important to the Jewish community when it comes to the Torah, when it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to the very beginning of Genesis, we have energy, life, and light. This is the whole concept of creation. And when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he was going right back to Genesis. Listen, Genesis, I didn't always say we can go where? We can always go back to Genesis. Where God said, let light be, 
And he said, and there was light, and he saw that the light was good. In verse 4 it says, and the Lord saw, God saw, the Lord God saw that the light was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. He divides, he divides the light from the darkness. By dividing, he, he puts something between it so that they could never meet in the sense of existing together. Rachel's concept of God and Rachel's concept of her husband was that he had the power as God to give me fruit. It's your, it's your fault I don't have children. And it's so easy for us to blame people. It's your fault. But watch what Jesus says. Jesus addresses the crowd as the light of life. <laughs> Check this out now. When he's saying this, I mean, the sun was shining, it was a bright day, and to show the parallel of life, he stands before the leaders and the people, and he gives them a definitive principle that they would never forget, and that he is the light of the world. He's the one that all things came to be, all, everything. He is the energy of life. If you want to find the word energy, oh, it's in the Bibles. You'll find it in many places, specifically also in in Ephesians, where it talks about that the power of God, now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to his great power that works within us, you will find that his energy, life, and light, he is the one that could do much more than we could ever imagine. And this is the concept that Rachel was missing with God. She did not look to God as the life of that she needed in her womb. God only strikes the seed that comes out of you and plant it when there is purpose and his will and you are walking right with God. Zara seed. The first letter of seed actually is a sword. Hmm. So he goes back to Genesis chapter 1. And so we see that the story of Jacob and Rachel is to be understood that Jacob did not have the power to open the womb of her to have children. And as long as we look to man, we will never achieve the true value of life and the fruit that comes only through God. Sometimes we may blame others for our lack, but if we look deep inside, we will find that only the Creator can satisfy our deepest needs. Rachel was living in the darkness of her misery because she had no children. She was unsatisfied. Now think about this. She was the leader of the pack, and yet she could not find the purpose for her existence without the fruit in her womb. She longed for it. Wait a minute. She had children through her maidservant, but watch this. is is interesting that in her frustration, she looked to others to bear fruit so that she could be happy. Stop it. Stop that, folks. The way that you walk, and we're going to see at the end, what does it mean to walk with God? What does it mean to walk in the light? Otherwise, you are going to be a frustrated Christian, always looking for others to bear fruit for you so that you can be happy. Stop it. Stop it. God put Adam in the garden to till it for himself so that he would be working in the garden of God. But to be happy, he had to keep it. The Bible says he was put there to keep it. Shema, it means to keep, to protect, to put a barrier around it so that no one else can touch it. You know, when Joseph was born, when Joseph was born, look what Rachel says. God has taken away my reproach. Wait a minute. She just had two children from her maidservant, Dan, my judge, and Neptali, my struggle. In other words, she named them. She said, well, you know what? This is Dan. God has, has judged me. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. When you plant seeds outside of the will of God, uh -oh. you're going to bring God's judgment upon your seed. And when you plant seeds in the place where God has not told you to plant it, you're going to struggle. And you thought that her struggle and her 
her problems were over? No, it was when God finally opened up, opened up her womb. I wonder if she should have waited. That she gives birth to Joseph, and Joseph means God will add. And prophetically, she sees something in Joseph, not only that God will add to her, but she said that God will add another son. She knew another one was coming. <laughs> but watch the, the word reproach. She says, watch this, the word reproach. She says, God has taken away my reproach. The word reproach in the Hebrew has a real deep and beautiful meaning. It means the piercing cold of winter. And what happened is that God, you see me there for a minute, huh? <laughs> okay. Check this out now. It means that God took away the coldness that was in her soul because... She was trying to bear fruit on her own power. Are, are you getting this? When you are not walking in the light with Christ, the light of Christ, you're not only walking in ignorance, watch this now, but your soul becomes kind of cold, doesn't it? You say, God, what's happening? There's something wrong. Well, let me tell you something. The light that gives heat for warmness is Christ. The sun gives heat. The sun gives heat. And when we walk in the light of God's truth, in the walk, we walk in the, in the light of God's word, there is warmness for the soul. The doctrines of Christ are are warm to the soul. That's why I study the doctrines of Christ. What he has to say about this, 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 that, 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 that. Because I want to know how he thinks about certain things. So when we walk with Jesus, the light of his truth will satisfy us. So Rachel did not delight herself in the Lord. Now, the doctrines of Christ is the light that transforms the soul. Hmm? And this is why you need to study. If we claim to be in the light, yet we do not study the things that he taught, we will be empty in a sense of being barren. God, how come it's not happening? How come I'm not bearing fruit? Why? Because we're not studying the truth. I want to let you know for myself, after studying the word and studying constantly, now I get up earlier now. Now I used to get up at 5, 4.30. Now I find myself sometimes getting up at 3 and 3.30 in the morning to study just for our morning broadcast. I want to let you know that the cold nights are gone in my soul because I live in the heat of God's word. When you, listen, when you walk in the light of God's word, that's what it means to walk in, to study, to know him. The heat of God's word will remove the coldness in your soul and give you the purpose and destiny of your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled, hot, heat day in the Word of God. Amen.